Whether you're familiar with the source material or if you're just a fan of the show, there's obviously numerous characters you can point to that are responsible for what will ultimately become the Targaryen Civil War known as the Dance of the Dragons. In this video, we're going to focus specifically on Alicent Hightower's role in the war to come. We'll discuss the events that have transpired early on in the show that brought her from the innocent best friend of Rhaenyra Targaryen and daughter to the Hand of the King, to who will ultimately become one of the most powerful players in the House of the Dragon as we get deeper into the Dance of the Dragons. The last part of this video will have spoilers for the source material. Obviously, the show will have some creative changes, but I will make a disclaimer at that point in the video if you wish to avoid the spoilers from the books. And now, without further ado, this is Why Alicent Started a War. Early on in House of the Dragon, there's a very obvious contrast between Alicent Hightower and Rhaenyra Targaryen. It must be noted that the age difference in the books is significant as in the books, Alicent is older than Rhaenyra by nine years. This is a change the show made that I think thus far has worked really well and enhances the more intimate tension between the queen and the princess later on in the story. From the start, we see Alicent as a noble daughter to the hand of the king, Otto Hightower, a young woman who does everything by the rules. She always adheres to the direction of her father, and it's very clear that Rhaenyra's blood of the dragon personality is much more unorthodox in comparison. Alicent always does her duty and is the epitome of what is expected of women in this world and time. Upon the death of Emma Arryn, the queen, Otto Hightower quickly uses this as an opportunity to insert Alicent into the fold with King Viserys, alluring the king to eventually name Alicent as his future queen. Now this could be seen as manipulation from Otto to his daughter, Alicent, but keep in mind that all noble daughters are expected to be married off to form alliances. That is the primary purpose of marriage. So for Alicent herself, winning the favor of the king is simply her doing her duty as a noble daughter and serving her house. Those familiar with Game of Thrones or any of the A Song of Ice and Fire books know this as commonplace in Westeros. And as any queen in this world or even noble woman, her primary duty is to produce heirs for her king or noble husband. Now, this is a bit different in the books just because there's more context compared to Fire and Blood's historical textile, but the show displays Alicent as someone who isn't seeking to put her son on the throne yet, but rather she supports Rhaenyra's claim as heir, as that was the decision of King Viserys. This is where Alicent and Rhaenyra's friendship in the show versus their neutral relationship in the books feels a bit enhanced by this adaptation, giving their falling out a bit more weight later on. Moving along in the show at a rapid pace, Alicent having married Viserys and already producing a son and heir, Aegon, I think it's important to revisit this scene in episode 3 from the show between Alicent and her father. Alicent still clings to the notion that Rhaenyra should be heir. However, Otto illustrates and ultimately instructs Alicent to make it clear that the firstborn son should rule or risk the realm tearing itself apart. This is when we first see Alicent's innocence become challenged. Up to this point, she serves her duty. However, knowing that the king and the realm swore fealty to Rhaenyra, she becomes conflicted because her father Otto Hightower presents to her the reality of how this world operates. The firstborn son will always have the favor of the realm, regardless of how reluctant Alicent may be to concede this point. Otto is not wrong. Episode 4 does the best job at illustrating the difference and ultimately the divide between Alicent and Rhaenyra. The sex scenes have very different tones for each of our female characters. While Rhaenyra continues to explore and enjoy a sense of liberation, Alicent continues to perform her duty in a rather uncomfortable and unpleasant scene where she lays with the king. But this is what she was raised to do, serve the realm by serving your king and husband. When Alicent learns of Rhaenyra's escapades with Daemon, you could argue she's being naive to not believe it. I think it's more that she doesn't want to believe it. She doesn't want to believe that another woman gets to live this free life and explore different experiences that are frowned upon by the realm. It's not fair, because Alicent continues to do her duty. So she forces herself to believe Rhaenyra over her father. Now in episode 5, as Otto is leaving, he calls Alicent out for her naive outlook. She did choose Rhaenyra. But something happens in this episode as Otto prepares to leave at the king's instruction as Otto has been unnamed as hand to the king. Otto becomes much more straightforward about the risk Alicent is taking by continuing to support Rhaenyra's claim. 
He essentially calls Alicent foolish for believing Rhaenyra's lies about her time with Daemon, but more importantly, provides a realistic prediction on what will become of her children if Rhaenyra ultimately ascends the Iron Throne. They will be put to the sword. Rhaenyra may have no choice because the realm would fracture and half would demand that Aegon be named king. This is a reality that Alicent may have only just now come to terms with. Choose her son as king or hope for mercy from Rhaenyra. However, Alicent still needs just one last push before she totally embraces that Aegon should become heir. And I must also point out that losing her father as he's sent back to Old Town definitely makes her feel much more vulnerable and almost guilty because her choosing to support Rhaenyra and her lies ultimately assisted in Otto's removal as Hand of the King. So later in episode 5, a very peculiar character makes his presence known to House of the Dragon audiences. Many will make the comparison to Varys or Littlefinger, and you'd be on the right track in a way. But from the words of Archmaester Gildane, the enigma that is Larys Strong, the clubfoot, has vexed students of history for generations, and is not one we can hope to unravel here. Where did his true loyalty lie? What was he about? Well, this curiosity for House of the Dragon fans begins when he approaches Queen Alicent. He seemingly knows things that he should not, and though he plays coy with Alicent, he spreads the gossip that a tea had been brought to Rhaenyra the very same night Otto Hightower was dismissed as hand. Things begin to click for Alicent. The tea Laris speaks of is probably moon tea. Moon tea is essentially a morning after pill. It's used to abort pregnancies. Alicent takes this information with her as she pursues the truth of the rumors about Rhaenyra's night out with Daemon. She decides to question none other than Sir Kristen Cole, whom Rhaenyra slept with after her night out with Daemon. And upon very light questioning, Chris and Cole confesses quickly to breaking his oath and having sex with Princess Rhaenyra. This is the final dagger. Not only has Rhaenyra lied to Alicent, but it may be even more outlandish than Alicent thought. As Alicent lives a rather unpleasant existence serving her duty to King Viserys, Rhaenyra is rumored to be sleeping with Daemon and now she knows about Chris and Cole and Rhaenyra's secret affairs, and it comes across as betrayal. Remember, Alicent feels responsible for Otto being dismissed as handed and sent back to Old Town. She supported Rhaenyra's claim, and Alicent's naive innocence has only hurt her. I think when you see Alicent first don that green dress, it's a great statement for her to realign herself to House Hightower, and ultimately begin her pursuit of establishing her son Aegon as heir to the Iron Throne, while also establishing that Alicent herself will become a true player in the Game of Thrones. That scene in Episode 5 is essentially a subtle declaration of war. Now at the time of making this video, Episode 6 many of you have just watched or will watch soon, so this is my official spoiler warning for those unfamiliar with the source material, Episode 6 and beyond. While I'm sure there will be creative changes, discussing the source material may spoil the show, but no more than it would if you had read the books. This next part is much shorter, but expect spoilers for the rest of this video. So if you're familiar with the source material, you're aware of the numerous rumors surrounding Rhaenyra's children. Many believe it's not Lenor Valarian who fathered these kids, but rather Rhaenyra's secret lover, Harwin Strong. This is a rumor that Alicent persistently pushes to King Viserys. While he's dismissive, these rumors grow throughout King's Landing. Being backed by House Hightower, obviously, the push for Aegon as heir is also supported by a couple key allies for Alicent, among others. Specifically, Chris and Cole and Lara Strong stand with Alicent and Team Green, but also you have Tylen Lannister, Jasper Wilde, and of course, upon returning to King's Landing, Otto Hightower. So you have a pretty prominent group supporting Aegon's claim. But something that is interesting in the books is Aegon himself is reluctant to accept this role as heir. But with pushing from Alicent and his grandfather Otto among the Green Council, he does accept. Here's why I look at Alicent as complicit in the Dance of the Dragons. When you look at who's responsible for the war, I think it's noteworthy to point to who could have prevented it. What you'll see in the first season is Alicent pushes forward the rumor about Rhaenyra's children. Anything to invalidate the princess or her virtue could be catastrophic to her claim to the Iron Throne. Also, be mindful of the alliance that she draws from Kristen Cole. She takes Rhaenyra's lover and turns him into her own sworn sword and ultimately uses his emotions toward Rhaenyra against the princess. Now here's where Team Black Loyalists may turn against me. The way they're playing things out in House of the Dragon, I have a difficult time seeing a realm that was once unified by Targaryens 
actually supporting Rhaenyra, especially when you consider the possibility that her children are bastards. A Targaryen and Valarian alliance could be very strong, but not if it's built on a lie. Then, when you look at the Greens, you have a Targaryen born of legitimate birth with the name Aegon, and with the reality being that Rhaenyra in all likelihood would be a threat to Alicent's children if she were to become queen, Alicent really has no choice in this matter. So yes, absolutely, Alicent starts a war by naming her son heir when Viserys dies. All of the Greens start a war when they proclaim Aegon as king. What Otto tells her in Season 5 is correct. Her children are at risk. Did Alicent start the war in a traditional proclamation of war? No, but she could have prevented it. But if she did stand by Rhaenyra, I believe that would have started a war as well. It depends on the characterization in House of the Dragon, but Otto wasn't going to stop pushing for Aegon, and there's also the rest of the realm that would have persisted. Without Viserys naming a male heir or marrying Rhaenyra to Aegon, the once peaceful and prosperous realm he inherited, he left in a disastrous state. Alicent was innocent in this show for a while, but due to the circumstances around her, she had no choice but to become an active player, even if that meant taking part and provoking a war.